Thanks so much. Look at those many talented gentlemen. They can be your movers as well, movers and shakers. So next up, come on up, Werner, uh, speaking on building trust and dot sport. How do you do that? I want to hear, Werner. It's a, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's actually more complicated than that. I imagine. <laughs> Uh, maybe first of all, you know, the word trust, you know, whenever I hear it, I think of the Jungle Book and the hypnotic serpent Ka singing, trust in me, just in me. And uh, it, it, it kind of shows that trust, you know, of course, we aspire to, you know, being trusted and so, and, and so on. But trust without proof is usually dangerous. It can be a very bad idea. Uh, we also had the, the keyword dot sport in there, and I would like to point out this is for sport as a whole. Dot sport being inside of sport, a top level domain run by the sport community for the sport community, and it is under the responsibility of the international sports federations who have a pretty solid organizational model. Which is actually what we're trying, what we're trying to, to do here. I'm going to see if I can um, use this. Okay. You see, the, the, it says standardized DNS6 signed attestation for sport. We're not saying trust. That to be learned that with the word trust, we have to be a little bit more um, uh, careful because it has to be specific. Does it? Okay. So... Those are real life malicious impersonations, you know, involving um, uh, sport. You see uh, 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 an athlete here being used. Um, uh, this is a fake newspaper. Of course, if you look at these, these domain names on the top, they're totally irrelevant. I mean, the, the, the users don't even look at, that, at those um, uh, domain names. And uh, what the users look at, of course, are the logos. And uh, the logos are, of course, the obvious real logos of the real media outlets. You know, this is uh, Swiss TV. This is a 20 minutes newspaper. This is a major tabloid in, in, uh, in, in Switzerland. This just happened to be sent to me. I mean, it's probably you've seen, this, uh, you've seen the same thing. And um, when you look at what the social, this was delivered over social networks. Looking at the social network in question, this was YouTube, you know, they literally say that advertiser identity verified by Google, no lesser organization than Google, has verified uh, this advertiser. And the advertiser is Blatech Agency Spolkas Organizat, something in Poland. And it was forced in German, in Switzerland, you know, nothing to do with Poland, and nothing to do with the type of, uh, of uh, what was it, the... Financial planning and management had nothing to do with that. So it's, um, but all that was possible. Why? Because the outgoing link is a domain name, but that domain name wasn't verified by Google. What they verified was this outfit, you know, who could then use any, any other domain name. So when you look at uh, the typical answers we had to this problem was, Logo programs, like there's a logo saying, you know, affiliated with the association of above the board, whatever, you know. But that logo can easily be copied, so that's not a good, that's not a good way to, uh, to provide proof. Uh, so what we're also seeing is, you know, typically it was just discussed before in the .gov or gov.cc spaces, we use the subdomain of a certain of a certain domain as a way to say, if it's a subdomain, then it is, of course, under that responsibility. That's, that's a form of proof. You know, it's, um, uh, you know, if, short of some tricks that in turn could actually be avoided by DNSSEC, you know, this is pretty good. It's, um, and what we're actually proposing is to go a step further and use a domain name linked to another domain name using DNS pointers signed by DNSSEC. And uh, they don't have to be subdomains. So, so that's, that, that works. So in this case, we've got the International Gymnastics Federation. It uses gymnastics.sport as its main domain. And uh, this is a traditional, real-life, you know, 
not-for-profit association recognized by the fact that the domain name is totally illegible. You know, as you can say, STV-FSG. Why? Because this is the German abbreviation and the French abbreviation of the same Swiss Gymnastics um, uh, um, Federation stuck together in a single um, uh, domain name. But actually, you know, quite, quite credible. But of course, you know, how will people know? It's even hard to remember. So uh, how do we do this? This is an example here. We use the DNS. You know, this is the new syntax that we're working on, but let's say the, the, the idea is essentially that the domain purporting to be attested to has a reference, like a, a sub, you know, we call this a, an, an attribute leaf. It's a, a subdomain underscore references dot the domain. And it just says gymnastics.sport. Is my, is my reference. And then the system verifying it knows that if that's true, it will check another sub, um, you know, uh, attribute leaf, statements by dot gymnastics dot sport, you know, that's, that's just where you can find it, you know, that would be part of the standard. And then it, what do you have to say about stv-fsg.ch? You know, basically, this is the stv-fsg.j dot statement by gymnastics dot sport, you know. It's a text record, it's an established, it's available everywhere, the infrastructure is available, and it just has a sentence. That sentence, you know, the whole idea is that it should be human readable and computer readable. So machines can actually interpret it, but if the outside counsel of the organization here needs to understand what's here, and the outside counsel is not necessarily DNS, expert, you know, so it should be such that you can read this in English and um, it, you know, you will make sense um, um, out of that, out of that word. Now in sport, we've got, fortunately, a governance model that has some structure. I mean, it's got its challenges. There's no, nobody denies that any governance model has its challenges, but it's pretty remarkable to have this, the, the, this logic. Essentially, we've got International federations, you see, I see them here, the line here, button represents them with things like FIFA, like FIS, and, uh, FIS and, and, and FIG and so on. All these international federations, some of them small, some of them big, they're grouped together in summer federation, Olympic summer federations, in the winter federations, you know, <clears throat> IOC recognized federations and generally recognized in the, in the, in the federations. Those are four Umbrella organizations, you know, see those logos here, and you know they together have an association which we call Sport Accord. We kind of they they share their common and Sport Accord. This one here is also the registry operator of that sport. So uh, here are the you know the websites of those umbrella organizations, um, uh, and here is now one of the examples that we've been run you know we've been running like for about a year or so. We ran an, um, a service where you would be able to look up any one of those domains, you know, in, in this format here. So basically, this is a lookup of the Gymnastics Federation of the Swiss Canton of Vaux. So gymvaux.ch, you just add who's who, dot who's who at the end, and it comes up with a, you know, it sends out DNS requests, and it actually generates that picture. If you want to do this on your on smartphone, you can do this. Uh, so we'll basically see that it generates this um, uh, this picture based on the DNS records that it will find. So it goes and finds DNS record, which leads it to, to look for another one, which leads it to look for another one. So basically it goes through by its own strategy to the ones that it finds. If it doesn't find one, if there's nothing to display, I'm basically nothing to say. So, um, and uh, there's actually even two pages of, um, of those. We linked in there uh, also the, the, the fact that most of these federations have legal entity identifiers. So these are 20 character codes that actually have a URN schema. So we, uh, and you can do, do, do lookups in, um, on the LEI um, uh, network as well. So basically that gives background information about the organization, which is pretty solid. Now here I'm almost done. Uh, we learned, you know, when we maybe go quickly back to the this thing here. Initially, we used words like trust. You know, we come back to the the, the topic we we had before. You know, this was just a 
uh, an experiment, and we realized that this was a problem. You know, if we wanted to extend that, uh, it, it wouldn't work, even though we, we tried to show this in the logic of a proof of concept rating agency, which would have its opinions, and, um, uh, and so on, basically. But the problem is that, imagine this was a bank. You know, you could actually have a trust-like uh, pointer here, but does that mean if the, the bank is good to actually, you know, ma uh, invest your money? That's not the same question. Is this a real bank? So this is too global. We need to have more, more specific uh, 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 statements. And so um, uh, here we come basically to, you know, an example of one thing that, that could be, you know, could be the, the, the syntax of working on this project. There's a program that's basically going to start next year to try to do this for the Federation, but also open to brands. And basically that's why I'm using a brand here. What you see here is um, Apple, Apple Fitness. Sport. This is a real domain, actually in existence, and actually owned by Apple. And uh, you already see now it's not being used. It's, it's defensive. Now, why is it not being used? One of the problems that even such a big company as Apple has, how does it show to the machines that it is actually responsible for this domain? It's a, you, need, you need to stand it here. So wait, this is kind of a way that even like for a brand, this can be done. And so... For this domain name, the only thing the, the, the holders of the domain name would need to do is to put in a claim, which is references. My references are, that's in the claim. And then Nick says, you know, I claim that my references are apple.com and DNS at test.sport. That's the project that we're launching you know, um, um, shortly. So basically, it's just, it could be more references, you know, just like when you send your CVs to somebody, have references and people may call those references and to see, you know, if, 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 if the things that you say about yourselves are, are actually credible. And so if Apple itself were to um, supply the information from apple.com, this would be, you know, um, a domain name, applefitness.sport.statementby apple.com basically that's just a subdomain of apple.com and uh, has a text record and essentially this is part of a standardized language um, uh, that will be used to say well, we own apple uh, fitness uh, dot sport there may be other things to be said about that let's say that's another that's another topic and keep it simple now that's inside of the company now the idea is that if internal organization, external organizations are available, they can do something more and they can do something that is now becoming a big problem. The name of the domain holder is currently not available in any neutral fashion at all. You'd have to go into the content of the web page to be told by whoever it is to say, I am Apple. Maybe they're not, we, we, we just can see. Basically, you need to get it from somebody who can say so with authority, somebody that you trust. So the idea is that, you know, if this is one of the trusted resources, you know, this is one of the ideas of the project, there's a trusted resource that would be vetted and, you know, could, you know, could be uh, then in somebody's trust network or not, and anybody would be free, any relying party would be free to decide whether they want to use it or not. Um, uh, then you know that this is the name. They can actually further point to the legal entity identified. That is actually Apple's legal identity, uh, legal entity identifier. And then basically this this um, um, uh, this sentence here. So um, uh, the lookup for this is like essentially 20 milliseconds until you get an answer. So this is really fast. Everybody has it, and thanks to DNSSEC, which again is generally available, we don't have a problem. We even don't have the generally, generally, you know, the general objection that people have in DNSSEC, it is not widely used. The only one who needs to use DNSSEC is this party here, or in, this, in the case of Apple, you know, the, the, this party. here. The party being attested to doesn't have to have DNSSEC. You just have to have DNSSEC if you want to be a credible source of attestation. So in, the, in, the, in this form, we believe that you know, if we try to kind of interact in, in the community of how to set up a language like that, we should try to make it as flexible as possible. So I'm really you know, interested in feedback of how we could design the, this language. 
we decided to start out in sport with this because we have you know a task at hand we design try to design it in such a way that it would be extensible to other communities and industries and brands and and, and, and so on so the closer we get to getting it right you know the you know the, the better from the, for everybody so you know the the, the call for action give me your feedback about that kind of thing that's essentially the close of this presentation if there's any questions or applicants Any questions? That, that, no, that's, that's the answer, that's the response. Go on, a round of applause for Vanna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very nice. And bear with me one second.